action. Early in the morning, sun shining down upon me. We're shooting a movie called Shelter, directed by Jonah Markowitz. Very talented. Badass. To me, this is a movie that a lot of people can identify with. This is a movie that most people can identify with. Shelter's a coming of age story where, uh, where a couple of people find that uh, there is true love in the most unlikely of places in the, uh, in the world of Southern California surfing. This movie is about Zach, who is a young man who's coming into his own. Zach, who's from San Pedro, and kind of, you know, the wrong side of the tracks. And basically is an amazing artist and does these stencils that, you know, cuts out and spray paints, and that's like his dream. It's, it's a film about this kid, and then he happens to discover that he's gay and have a gay relationship in the course of the story, but it's all tied up in, in with his other journeys in the story of becoming an artist, of learning to speak up for himself. Not be afraid to be who he really is. And one part of that is being gay, but he's also got other huge issues going on with taking care of his family and his alcoholic sister. Oh, <laughs> Just put him to bed. Oh, come on. Everything. Just keep it down, all right? In the film, there's really sort of three worlds for me. And the first is Zach when he's out in the water, which is when he gets to be free and literally step off the planet. And um, Sean gets to enter that world with him. a good balance to the story that we were able to both share that guy's guy world and then also share the the intimacy of growing together as, as lovers and partners it was it was uh, it added a, a very real element to it shelter has got a really good grasp on uh, what surfing is and what it what it means you know the, the heart soul of it it's been shot at real places where real surfers surf you know with real surfers surfing and yeah, it's just got that, it's got the edge on it. The surf world is one of those areas where there aren't that many gay, it's not a big gay scene. Surfers are dudes. It's not traditionally the types of characters that you would say, let's have a coming out of the closet type story and let's set it in the world of surfing. Sean, what? Sean, just chill. Well, Jonah, I think, Jonah Markowitz, the writer-director, is definitely very personally attached to the material. Like, he surfs himself. He is an artist himself. I wanted to push it into surfing, less for the, the sort of thrill factor of surfing and more for being out in the water and being with your friends, being outside, enjoying yourself and being physical and having no other cares. For the day. I'm gone for the day. Oh! Hey, you lasted pretty long out there, old man. <laughs> uh, and then we also see him in San Pedro, which is um, a very urban element, and I really wanted to bring an urban element into this story. Usually when you see you know, stories that take place in Southern California or that take place on the beach, you definitely don't get that urban element, and I really wanted that to be a part of this film. And then the third world is in Laguna, which is when he goes to the house where he's been going since he was a kid, and this is definitely the other side of the tracks. Seeing that other light of Laguna and these rich kids, he doesn't get these chances that other people get, so he really has to fight for what he wants. You see my portfolio? I can't find it anywhere. I don't know. The portfolio I was putting together for Cal Arts. No, I haven't seen it. Ducky, what are you doing? What? They turned you down. Why do you want to put yourself through that again? Just thought I'd give it another shot, you know? Well, don't bother. That place is full of rich kid painters, and they're all going to end up working at art stores anyway. Yeah, maybe. You know, me struggling, working two jobs, slaving, basically picking chains from my seats. Cut it. Being the responsible one. 
When did you draw this one? A long time ago. My mom used to work here just like yours. So sometimes I would just wait out here and I'd draw. Who would wait with you? When? When you drew these. No one. Always having to deal with, you know, all these things in my family, and I never really get a focus on myself. Cody lost his father. He needs you. He needs a positive man in his life. You know, Cody has a sense of family because of me. Mom died, and I got the family fucking gene. Oh, I see. So it's the family gene that's making you run off and have your big gay wedding? You gonna make the family proud? You know, Zach, he's basically coming into a new light and realizing that there's a future beyond just what's happening in San Pedro. I thought your ghetto ass would be done breaking and entering by now. Then change the code, bitch. What, are you gonna tag the garage next? That may not go over, you know. But the Pacific Bluff Homeowners Agreement wouldn't wanna set your dad in trouble with the board. The characters of Zach and Sean have a history. Well, you know about him, right? What about him? He's gay. Uh, Sean Andrews is, he's an older guy who helps our young protagonist, Zach, uh, find his way from being a 22-year-old sexually questioning youngster into uh, fully walking out of the closet. Uh, I'm just down for a few weeks. House is empty. I can enjoy it, clear my head a little bit. You want to go? Surfing? I suppose there's still a few things I could teach you. We have this sort of mentor, apprentice type relationship, which is kind of funny and ends up sort of paralleling where our relationship goes. Perhaps master underestimates student. You know, he just had that overpowering charm that really just had a connection and this, you know, desire that I've never seen before or even thought of. You know, they, they clearly have had an affection for each other. You dating anyone? No, I just broke up. Yeah? Is that why you're really down here? No, no, no. I'm, uh... <laughs> yeah, actually it is. <laughs> I hear you've been hanging out with Sean. Surfing. Zach, I just, I don't think that he's the best guy to be hanging out with all day half naked, if you know what I mean. I don't want Cody around that. What? Why? Jean has a great character. I love the character of Jean. She is a horrible mother and that makes a lot of bad choices. Jean, get up. Get up. What are you doing? Sleeping. Yeah, with some help. Wait, Zach, wait. Hang on. Alan got that job. Yeah. In Portland, and um, I gotta go with them. But they don't take kids. What? What do you mean they don't take kids? I don't know. They they just they don't take kids. Cody's gonna have to stay here with you and Poppy just at least until we get set up. With me and Dad for how long? I don't know. Six months. A year. You know he can't stay with Dad. I know. He can't come with me. She's just troubled, you know? She's just a troubled person that's trying to do what's best in the world and has love for her brother and love for her son, but it doesn't always make the right choices. It's a dark character. It was, you know, it's not a fun, place to dwell, but I was interested, I guess, in the family dynamic that, you know, even people that you love, you can really impact each other in harmful ways, in ways that are particularly difficult to disengage from. I think families have a big pull on us, for, for better or for worse. Zach, are you trying to fuck up our family? Yeah, yeah, Jeannie, that's what I'm trying to do. I was moved by her, her loneliness and the vulnerability there. Where were you last night? I called you like three times. Did you need something? Yeah. I need to know you're there. I, I don't like 
the way that it made her behave, but I, I understood that core. Is that what you're scared of? This isn't about Sean or me. This is about you being left. I'm the only one who hasn't run off on you. There's so many elements in the script of these different relationships with, you know, breaking up with a high school girlfriend that I've had for years. Listen, I'm sorry about the other day. Just make up your mind, Zach. If you don't want to be together, then just don't pull that shit on me. Okay. If it's what you want, then I'm going to move on. All right. You know what that means, right? Yeah, Tori, I know what that means. Just go, OK? I think that Tori knows for a while, obviously, that something's wrong, something's off. Short. You're the only reason I wish I wasn't. Do you love him? Seriously? He's a good guy, Zach. We don't belong to people forever. It's hard dealing with relationships and people from your past and trying to move on with different situations. Dude, so what's the latest? You and Toy really over this time? Yeah. Glad to hear it. It's about time. So what are you doing then? Just playing the field? Jonah told me that, you know, this exact movie happened to him. And he really, he really went in depth in explaining that he had a friend just like Gabe, you know, who's completely oblivious to his situation and, you know, and, and his having to deal with hiding that from his best friend for so long. And so many of the situations in the movie are really actually quite funny and, and humorous. And his best friend, who didn't know about it and who it's been hidden from the whole time, comes home out of nowhere, comes bounding on the door and running upstairs. This is when stuff's not out in the open yet. And so they're scrambling inside, and one guy's hiding underneath the bathtub, and you know, my character's like busting in the door, like, hey bro, what's going on? Like, and he's completely oblivious to, you know, to the whole situation. Hey, interrupt your beating off or what? No, I'm sleeping. Jeez. Sleeping? Yes. Door locked? Okay, weirdo. No, hey! No! Come here, dude. <laughs> Good to see you too, bro. Oh, I miss you, you bro. so much. There it is, yeah. Oh. And that's the comedy in the situation is that I'm so oblivious. They're freaking out. You know, he's so oblivious that he's like, he doesn't even notice that they're freaking out. You know, or that Sean's freaking out, rather. Right. And I go right past him and I make myself at, at home on the bed. Probably the bed where they just copulated. <laughs> so, are you ready to hang up your pink Gucci suit and come battle out with your real friends? Yeah, okay. Right on. I'll call Zach. Okay. Good. Good call. What was that? June's probably cleaning today. But uh, June comes on Tuesdays. Yes, she does. Pool guy? I don't know. <laughs> right? You okay? Yeah. Yeah, you look a bit freaked out. No, I'm just tired. Right. Start. There ain't good to eat in the fridge. You're just stocking low carb fag food. You're fucking starving, man. Just, just a lot of fag food. Bro, it's good, brother. Why didn't you tell me? Maybe I tell you what. Stay too long. I don't care at all. 
that I'm not the fact that it's my brother is totally weird. I know. I used to be the guy you came and talked to, remember? Before Sean? This isn't exactly easy on me. It isn't easy on you, right? The journey that we see Zach go on, to me, it's less about him deciding that he is gay, and it's more about having this person come into his life, who's Sean, who sees his artwork and sees something in it that no one else has before, and he sort of opens up to him in that way and um, shows him that he has something to share with the world that's important. Wow. Oh, what are you doing? Easy, dude, it's okay. I wanna look at it. No one ever looks at that. This is incredible. I mean, I think in any relationship, we start out with a certain amount of walls up and barriers, and we're guarded, and uh, sometimes we meet people that let us feel safe in sharing ourselves with and breaking those walls down. Hey. I need some time. I just don't know if this is really what I want. Seems like what you want. I just don't know if this is what I want. For good. <laughs> What's that supposed to mean? It's not as easy for me as it is for you. You know, this is, this is all totally new to me. Look, we'll get through the game thing. No, it's not that, Sean. You just don't get it, okay? I can't just take whatever I want. My life is not like that. You'll never get what you want unless you take it. Take it. You know, you and Gabe have always just been able to point and take, no questions asked. You don't realize that it's not like that for other people. It's fucking ignorant. Oh, and you and Gene just blame everyone else because you can't do anything for yourselves? Zach has become codependent. He thinks of himself last and everybody else first. And he feels obligated to everyone. And in the course of this movie, Gene, his sister, starts to become selfish. I admire what you're doing for Cody. You don't have to. Yeah, I do. It's a choice, Zach. It's family. Zach feels very responsible for Cody. It's just really great because Zach never had a father in his life, really, that was attentive. So he, that's why he's so personally driven to take care of Cody. Hey, Zach. What's up, Cody? Poppy sleeping. I can tell. Don't play with these, okay? Okay. These are for Grandpa. Okay. To me, this film is not a gay film. To me, this film is about a person. It's about a character who's learning to take control of his life and learning that he can stand up for what he wants. We start out at the beginning of the movie, at the beginning of Shelter, we, we see Zach and he's skating and he's free. It sort of parallels to him also surfing and being out in the water. And this is his time when he really gets to clear his head, not have these constraints put on him that he has in his life with his family. Uh, this is the time when he's free and he can do what he wants. So we sort of open there in the city that he's sort of taken on and turned into his artwork and used as his inspiration for his artwork. Yeah, way. yeah, but just yeah. hold it that way. Start to do it full on. And just a quick spray, look around and take off. Oh man, got some on my finger. Okay, so we're here uh, at Zach's mural. It signifies him finally meeting Sean and sort of being encouraged to do his artwork again and to do his street art. He's found this wall that we saw at the beginning of the movie. He's finally gotten the motivation to go ahead and see that his artwork is valid and to put it out there in the public space and to do this big mural that represents everything he's going through in his life. And in about an hour it'll be finished and it'll all be done. Doing a little time lapse on it. What are you about to do, buddy? Uh, some live art, big mural, a lot of, a lot of shapes, a lot of movement, a lot of uh, structure, a lot of solid lines. This is a, a style that I've formed and created for Zach and his role in the movie. His life is about like moving and spreading, spreading out with his stencils and his ideas. Action. We have a very talented cast, which is the most important thing. I just love the entire cast, and they all happen to be like just gorgeous eye candy. Yes, the actresses and actors are very, very good looking. Yeah, it's really rough. 
it's really, really tough to spend the day out in Malibu on the beach, surfing and swimming and, and hanging out with the whole hot young set. I want a kissing scene with Brad Rowe. <laughs> yeah, we couldn't work that into the storyline. Coming into this, meaning going into a gay relationship that I've never experienced myself. So, so doing that was brand new to me. And I think by that brought a lot of, you know, true values to Zach. This was a scary thing for him to go through as an actor, to play this character coming out of the closet. And you know, I gotta be honest, it's, I don't know, it was almost, you know, more passionate than doing it with a woman on screen, you know? I, I think doing love scenes with, with a woman is, uh, is more difficult. When you're a heterosexual male and you have a heterosexual female, there are boundaries that you're very aware that you don't wanna cross. So when you have two heterosexual guys who are doing a homosexual scene, you know, it's sort of, we go through the, the motions of it and have fun and do the whole thing. I felt totally comfortable, we talked about it, we did it, we just went for it and bang, you know? To me, I, I don't think the biggest stretch is, is actually the physical action of being intimate. I think it's finding that connection with the other individual. And, and that's difficult whether you're doing that uh, with another woman or with another guy. I think me and Sean's Brad Rose uh, chemistry was just awesome. You know, we really connected and and it, we just made it easy. I mean, I went further than, you know, I thought I would, that's for sure, with certain scenes, you know. Showing a little more skin than I planned on. I hope that people can watch this movie and see it as a movie that happens to have people that are gay in it which I don't think we get a lot of, um, and I'd like to see more of, and, and I hope we accomplish that. It's, it's really, it's a wonderful story. It's one of the best romantic stories that I've read in a really long time. I'm always really attracted to films that say something and that really stick their neck out there and, and take risks to tell a story that needs to be told. We've been developing the stories, you know, for a couple of months now. I'm, I'm really happy that they decided to acquire the script and that they, they saw something in this movie that they wanted to make, and. I'm really excited to see, you know, where they where they take it and where it goes. It was really refreshing to work with a director who is comfortable enough to allow you to lay your own interpretation. To me, Shelter is really a film about claiming your life and realizing what's important. Zach is a young man who is at the precipice in his life where he has to start considering who he is and what he's going to be in this world. I think it's a struggle that everybody has and everybody can relate to of just finding the courage to be who you are. I'll take the long way home. Why are you here? What changed? I did. My mistakes are my own, but I'll take the long way home.